never work. And what fight's going to last <laughs> long enough for you to get away with that? It's never going to happen. But here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We're heading to Sky Temple. And this could be, once again, the final game of the series if d Dung cannot take this. And they are first pick. It was about time we finally get deployed to Sky Temple. Supernova 3-0 up here, looking very solid, very strong. I don't see a way d can crack their defenses right now unless they really show up their A-game. Like, every single hero needs to be either a comfort pick or something that catches them off guard. There's no more room for something like, I'm going to pick this because it's good meta, but I'm not really 100% confirmed on this, on my own performance. So just don't pick heroes right now that are good because they're good. Pick them because you make them good. Here we see the Taranda being removed. I hope we will still see D-Dung burn the Maiev. It's another hero that they did not ban against uh, Trog, which Trog brought mm -hmm. up against them and just destroyed them with. Twice. Keep in mind that they're the ones picking first, though, so they're trying to somehow go. make that Genji sneak through, but I can't see a way that... Nah, Supernova's not going to let it through. No way. They really seem to play Genji, though. They keep banning <laughs> it. I, I, I'm sure it's been shown in, like... Open division games that we didn't see, things mean you only got to see the playoffs game-wise. Mm -hmm. So, but it's still interesting to see. Deckard Kane prioritized over other supports here, which I can't really fault. I think it's a good choice. It also now should ring some alarm bells on the side of Supernova. You see Deckard Kane, Rainer comes to mind, Sergeant Hammer comes to mind. So, are they going to pick either of those heroes away, or pick they, or are they going to pick some? Preemptive caution, uh, caution measures here. Nope, Rainer gets picked away. No early yep. Cassia, no early blinding sources like Johanna. Seems good. DRL. DRL this time, nerfed in a recent patch. Not right now, as we are playing on a previous patch. Mm -hmm. She's still giving that 30 armor. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, that was also changed with Morales. Her uh, W now gives 30 armor instead of 25 and has a lower oh, cooldown. Yeah. That's amazing. That was it. So cool. And here we see the Garrosh over Diablo this time. Mm -hmm. I guess they weren't confident after the uh, previous two games' performance. And honestly, I wouldn't even pick Diablo if I were Supernova now. I would probably go for a Muradin instead. Muradin or maybe a Johanna. I think Johanna is still not terrible. There's still some merit, uh, especially against heroes like Phoenix, when she blinds them. The Iron Skin is exceptionally good when it comes to dealing with CC that Garrosh and Decker can provide. But, I mean, Diablo is not bad per se. It's just that Diablo gets countered a little more easily than a Muradin by Garrosh. Here comes the White Main Van trying to take control of the support here. With Taranda, White Main Van, deck is stolen. That's the majority of the Tier 1 priorities. We're now looking at Malfurions and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, what is really left for them to pick in the support department? I mean... Asian regions sometimes are a little more experimenting than uh, Europe, for example. NA has been going crazy in terms of sports all across the board. They play Lucio, they play pretty much everything uh, these days. But it is the Alex Strasse coming in. Sky Temple, I wouldn't say, is her strongest map because there's not this one static objective that you can dominate, like an Infernal Shrine or a Volskaya platform. But still, it's probably going to get the job done. Into the Decker King, though, Tetcher. Oof, the anti healing. With that abundant abundance, that could be a strong counter. Good. We see the first Sergeant Hammer, though. The Deckard Kane Sergeant Hammer with some oh, yeah. delays frontlining as well. That is gorgeous. So we're going to see some disruption. I'm not sure I like the junk rat here. I would have seen very few issues picking a... Like, there's a little bit of hard engage, but I think the Zebo would have actually been pretty decent here. They may be uh, not on Sky Chromie. Temple, though, I think. Sky Temple is oftentimes a little too fast for an Azebo to get to that well, you power you, spike. You don't need to get to 20 with the, with the Azebo against Hammer. The whole idea of the Azebo against Hammer mm. is just booters and just stop <laughs> it, stop him sieging up. Yeah. I mean, yeah. There's there's definitely ups and downs for them. Yeah. Uh, but no, I, think it's, just me. I think it's safe to say that d got the stronger draft. I, I think so as well. It's definitely more synergistic. The Junkrat is an okay counter Hammer, but not mm -hmm. exceptional. So, yeah, I think I could agree with that. All right, it all comes down to execution, though, and especially the two supports are probably going to face off each other there. And uh, if the Decker Kane Emerald makes it through to the uh, Abundance when there's a lot of enemy heroes grouped up, that's going to be insanely powerful. But if Alex Strasse gets those good Dragon Queens in, some nice 
nicely timed dragon uh, cleansing flames as well, then she can single-handedly keep her team alive. So is Supernova going to stay in the pro division or will D-Dung buy themselves a little more time in this series? We'll find out on Sky Temple, D-Dung on the left in the blues and Supernova in the red on the right. And level one talents are standard. Very standard indeed. Mm -hmm. We've seen the neural stim pack coming in from Blaze. That can sometimes vary. Rainer on the very odd occasion will go for the exterminator here, but not in this case. Everything else is pretty dull. Haven, man, the MVP. If, if we had an MVP vote system like in China, Tetra, I'm pretty sure he would have yeah. gotten at least one of the votes up to this point. He's this time on the Anubarak. He shows us a different warrior every single game, it feels. Yeah, once again, once again, my argument of, like, I I have this argument with a couple people with a couple people over my career of the MVP, the best player in the game, it doesn't have to be on the winning team. Because right now I would say the MVP of this series, the most valued player, would be Hero. But of course, his team have yet to win a game yet. That is true. Also, I like how Junkrit just easily dealt with uh, the Sergeant Hammer, knocking them back. Already the rotation comes through here. No chat knows exactly how to counter the Sergeant Hammer. I mean, he's had plenty of time actually to uh, to do that in the Pro Division when they played God tier Sergeant Hammers like Rich, for example, and Gen G. So he should know, and he's probably going to bring a lot of experience to that. Tunnel away, Haven. It's a little bit of damage, but he's completely fine for the moment. Blaze and Yorel are just doing solo lane things. We can just ignore them until the objective starts. <laughs> it's basically the old tale of the immovable object against the unstoppable force. None of them is going to give in. Uh, we've seen this duel so many times right now with Blaze and Yorel still being so hard to kill, still having so much self-sustain. So yeah, unless one of them heavily misplays many times in a row, there's not going to... There's not going to be any kills happening. Indeedy. So, for now, then, we're seeing the lanes just continuing to be held. Mercenaries being taken by both teams, but the Bruiser camp is moving over significantly quicker than mm -hmm. the uh, than the lane for Dida. Yeah, Dida isn't even there yet. Days. Yeah, they yeah. haven't even started, as you said. So this could be a nice early game push, and many many times on sky temple have we seen how important this first bruiser push can be especially with that first temple phase always having a top temple available so the team that takes top temple will very likely be able to destroy an entire fort if that mercenary push prior had been successful what even pull up the dragon queen for this they are committing to this push. They know there's no Bruiser Camp for the defense here. Haven interrupts H82, who is eating a fair amount of damage, finally wow. getting the wind weapon. This will guarantee the front wall. Yeah, this is the front wall. And if they get the gate as well, yes, there it crumbles. Maybe even deal some additional damage onto the Link Fountain. That is going to be a 100% fort in the top lane for Supernova. Oh, don't tell me H82 is going to die here. Nope, stays alive. He's Garrosh after all. Haven also in a little bit of a risky position, but it's going to be completely fine here. And it's going to back up. Right, so D-Dunk can take a little bit of the information uh, away from this fight, right? They should know that Dragon Queen is now on cooldown. So if I were them, I would actually seek to engage in top lane and maybe contest a fight because without Dragon Queen, their forces are going to be significantly more powerful. Uh, looks like they still trade and split temples in the middle, though taking into account, fully into account, that their top fort is going to die. Top fort going down, mid fort eating a fair amount of damage. Supernova still going to come out on top, like you said, just due to the XP mm -hmm. and the amount of damage they were able to do beforehand. With boss already going to be available, uh, sorry, will be available very soon after this. Definitely before, of course, the second objective. So the question is, will they be able to take the opportunity are they going to be able to maybe grab someone in the rotation, or is it going to be the usual boss timing of where we see someone maybe get oh, picked off tactics. in bot lane on the altar? Ooh, tactics. a nice oh, mind yeah. game here between No Chat and yeah. uh, Crow. Waited until the Siege Tactics was wearing off. Actually, I think Crow used it too early. Maybe panicked a little bit there. And as such, the Concussion Mind would have been a lethal threat for Sergeant Hammer. Had to take a little bit of a detour and un-siege. Yeah, they were able to play around it, though, like you said, just due to those mind games, they were to react well enough for now though we do see both teams heading back into lanes with merc camps respawning 
and we can see more Siege Giant Pressure going to be attempting to apply to that bot lane because if they can do the same thing they did in top lane, Supernova can take down the front yeah. wall, maybe even Phantom, then they're going to have a huge advantage over the next objective. And honestly, Dragon Queen should be up again, so they could, as you said, rinse and repeat that move that they just made a couple of minutes ago. For now, though, they find a bl uh, find a garage, uses Indomitable, so it does get rooted. A nice uh -oh. knockback by Junkrat, though. H82 takes all those potions kindly laid in front of him by a good man, Decker Kane. What a bro. Healing too good. Instead, they toss in a new record, quickly tunnels away before any follow-up CC can land. Keeps himself alive there. Okay, so now comes the rotation onto the bottom lane. The mercenaries are still uncontested there. The siege giants with a big minion wave actually now pushing towards the base of D-Dung in the bot lane. Dragon Queen is ready. Are they going to pop it? Alex, by the way, is playing Alex Strasse again. His favorite hero. We've seen this in the pro division uh, when g Club and Wolf cast many, many times that Alex is playing Alex Strasse. One of the only supports in the league, I think, if not the only support that uh, consistently relies on her. Seemingly so. We used to have some open division people like that, but yeah. not oh. so much anymore. And we actually have some HC China teams who relied a bit too much, like a, a little bit too much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah la last season Druid uh, was definitely <laughs> a little bit too Alex Raza heavy. But now oh. they move, dive again, interrupts the teleport. Can they finish off Hero? No. Damage wasn't in position. Junkrat, no, they would do it by himself. Exactly. But it buys them time to cause and wreak a little bit of mayhem here. Uh, knocking these siege giants apart, knocking them closer to the tower so they get taken down quickly, more quickly. So yeah, Supernova is just uh, playing this really well. They have a structural advantage. Middle Fort is still alive as well, which is great. But now they need to regroup their forces in the bottom. Irel is nowhere to be found, so this temple can't be contested right now. Level 10 is here, though. Shots coming in, bending might this go for bottom area there. for the moment. Yeah, are Supernova going to contest this at all? That is weird, yeah, isn't it? Lasers play. Yeah, they have such a big positioning advantage. And it ends up they huh. want to get Blaze, but Blaze positions far too well. Just a bit of an outplay there by D Dung. Nice job, Blaze. Yeah, so they were able to get more than 50% of that temple D Dung, which is a great success for them. Now that Blaze, of course, has to deal with those mercs in the top lane, they realize, you know what? We're going to fight four versus five if Irel comes down here, so we better get the hell out of here. And uh, yeah, that was a pretty good trade in favor of D-Dunk, considering that they were struggling in the early game a little bit. But with both for somehow surviving, mid surviving the hammer assault, bot surviving the temple assault, Supernova, they're feeling good about this. Banshee scouting out around the boss area, making sure that nothing is amiss. All right, not a single kill has taken place, Tetran. We're already seven minutes and 30 into the game. You can really feel the tension, you know. On the one hand, D-Dunk, they don't want to fall. On the other hand, Supernova, they don't want to mess up right now. They don't want to, you know, waste the opportunity to cement their spot in the pro division. So neither of the teams is really willing to commit to any major risks. Now at this point, down go the Siege Giant camps quickly cleaned up. And with that, Supernova. Can they put, uh, finally use them to put on some pressure? The last one they did didn't actually get that much mm -hmm. value, but this one, they might have a bit of a better opportunity. Also, if one of those teams were to fall in a team fight right now, that would immediately lead to terrible consequences for them, right? Because look at the look at the forts right now, especially on the side of Supernova. They're all weakened in the bottom, in the middle. Top lane, the only fort that is looking uh, in decent shape here. So if d were to win a team fight, getting two or three kills even, they could immediately go for a double fort play and cement themselves with a nice experience lead. Might try to do so, but for now, the Dung seem pretty happy just playing a little bit on the defensive. <laughs> they got some siege giants now. Temple in mid will guarantee them mm -hmm. that fort if they're able to take control of it. Bot lane might require a little bit more fighting over it. Right, yeah, the raider <laughs> just landing one. Uh... One shot against the boss and retreats immediately here. Both teams probably hitting 13 at roughly the same time. Supernova a little bit faster, so they could try to go for that aggressive play immediately after hitting 13. Haven pings onto himself here, I think, to uh, indicate that they want to make a play. They go for the temple in the bottom. Temple in the bottom is usually a little more valuable, Tetra, than the one in the middle because it's so much more closely to the boss. So you can maintain boss control without, you know, risking that the enemy team is going to backdoor it. Supernova, 
holding the line for the moment. They're going to be able to grab bottom forge, giving themselves a fort lead, but mid lane is still under pressure. By, uh, sorry, has already been killed off by uh, D-Dunk. The question is, what else can they get out of that middle temple as well, especially with Yorel trying to contest yeah. it? Oh, fort's getting dropped low. This might end up being actually a triple fort play for both teams. I love the placement of the Concussion Mine and the Steel Trap, by the way, by Junkrat, putting it right in the middle of the lane, so it's almost impossible for D-Dunk to, uh, to go down to the bottom without being noticed first by something or someone. So yeah, both temples are shared, still waiting for the first kill in this game. Both teams super cautious, yeah. super tense, and rightfully so. And with that, it's going to be three faults in favor of Supernova, two, uh, two faults in favor of D-Dung. They weren't able to get the shots enough to finish off that bot lane, but Hammer's already down there. Prepared. Everyone else already positioned to zone, trying to get onto no chat, but a great cocoon onto Garrosh as Haven also says goodbye. But Hammer wow. guarantees bottom four during the distraction. That was a lightning speed reflex here coming in from No Chat and also a Nubrak Haven here dropping an emergency cocoon to really prevent Garrosh from getting that taunt through onto uh, Junkrat. So well done by them. And as you said, man, with that distraction going on, them surviving and buying enough time to live, that mercenary camp at the top lane is going to be yet again the thorn in D Dung's side. Comes the wave clear coming to the mercenary camp clear once again. Supernova on their third attempt to try and gain the value out of this. With bottom four down though, if they can cause a distraction, these will be going on to tier twos. This H82 needs a stun, but still zoning quite nicely. That better barb zone making this movement even more difficult than it already is as Garrosh. Low mobility tank can really struggle in these kind of scenarios. Uh, keep in mind that Alex Strauss has hit a pretty decent power spike now with that Circle of Life complete extra healing, and they will spawn a Reaching Globe, uh, the Abundant Circles, that is. She went for a very interesting 13 talent, actually, which I think is called Dragon Scales or something along those lines, where she gets extra armor after getting stunned or silenced or rooted. Like, we don't see the pacify, neither the extra healing. Yeah, this talent can be absolutely insane if it's given the uh, the light of day and you're against someone like an Anubarak. Keeps you alive, keeps you a little bit more stuck in, because it does very well with mm -hmm. an E build if you're going into a more quick match style and having a bit of fun. It's a cool talent. Yeah. It, it definitely is cool because when you're Alex Strasser, guess what the enemy team is going to try to do uh, most of the time? They're going to try to interrupt you while you're casting Dragon Queen or Cleansing Flames. And sometimes, even if you're the best Alex Strasser in the world, that's going to happen. And if it happens, you're oftentimes in a bad spot, but Dragon Scales will definitely help you with that 30 armor to stay alive and stay in combat, maybe long enough to give it another shot and eventually get that Dragon Queen through. You see the damn Riptire coming in. Uh -oh. Beautiful Lornado zoning so the Riptire away. Dragon Queen pushes Blaze into the Riptire just for good measure. But here comes the Salvo on the Retrieve, and Anubarak diving forward, doing some damage. The Healing Fire Alexander is completely shutting them down, but Anub finally gets taken out due to the bunker damage. Bunker damage is good, so it was a one-for-one -one trade. Main tank for an offlaner. I think that was a good trade for D-Dunk, though, because without Anub, there's not really a whole lot they can do to hold this front line. Yurel is very susceptible to that CC, and I think Supernova, they have to give this up. Yurel on the way to top lane. There's a mercenary camp pushing in favor of D-Dunk as well. This game, Tetcher, is looking mighty good for our amateur team, for our open division contenders. And here comes the quick wave clear. As you said, D-Dunk, they're fine looking good, but we've seen this before. Supernova, no they're keeping everything managed, but if they get killed, Yorel, this could be a huge deal. Leaps, heals, cube, triangle, and down goes Yorel. And I love how everybody is staying away from the melee range here for Yorel, so she can get the auto attacks, the healing auto attacks from her level 1 town, Marad's insight into play. Perfect play by D-Dunk, not grouping up, not splitting up, and killing yet another one. And that staggered deaths for Supernova. D-Dunk might be at the brink of making it, might be at the brink of stabilizing. That is a boss call, though, if I've ever seen one. The temple is occupied, and Supernova is trying to get value on the other half of the map. Or maybe just a Merc invade. Okay, that's safer, I guess. Good too. With that, Mercenaries being stolen away by Supernova. A person down, and they still want to put some aggression onto the map. <laughs> But they need to do it in an area where, of course, the young aren't. They know at least play the top players, so they know they at least get the 4v4. Here comes it's their Garrosh. best opportunity to do so. Garrosh very sensibly wondering whether they were doing their own siege giants or trying to sneak a boss while Blaze wasn't there. He was right to make that assumption, to scout it. He was lucky that they were doing the uh, simpler method. 
Yeah, for a moment I thought they would maybe try to go for a boss and uh, at least fake it so they would draw attention away from that temple. But of course the mercenaries were the much safer route, buys them a lot more time here as well. So now Irel, what is she up to? She's deep pushing top lane, very important. That keep had fallen actually. So Supernova now one keep down in the top lane. D-Dung having a massive boost now in terms of structural advantage, having a really good thorn in Supernova's side. And with top lane especially, when someone needs to defend that, that opens up the boss area so much more. And so, do they find... Never mind, I was about to say they find Haven, but Haven just leaves. And as such, the game continues, and it's a very slow pace. There's three mm -hmm. kills total in this 15-minute match. One kill every five minutes. <laughs> Both teams look for their angle. Hammer reigns in a little bit of napalm. Supernova, 320 for D-Dung are gonna try and grab this. Both teams on level uh, three, their Stormtear talents. This is their best chance to do so. The Trollnado of the boss being a bit of a pain. Cocoon drop on Garrus, they try and rush this quick. Oh, the stun hits Anubarak there as well, taking a little momentum away here, but they secure the boss. Garrus is still chilling in the Cocoon. Another great win buff it, but the health bars are dropping though. A great hearted defender with the cleansing claim coming in taunt though onto Raider who's getting dropped here. And that's a retreat coming in from Supernova. They get the boss but lose a member. All right, that was still a decent trade for Supernova. Guess why? They're going to have to send at least two members to deal with that boss. Mercenaries are pushing top and de pushing top for Supernova as well. And there's only one temple active right now. And guess where Kirisaku is already marching towards? That could actually be the equalizer in the top lane. I'm not sure how healthy that lane still is, but maybe they're going to get the counter keep. Shots coming in, like you say, a keep might be on the table, but with three members coming up for d Dunmaid, they might be able to force Supernova off this point for the moment. They don't have 20. Hammer is so far away, but like you said, without 20, it's just enough to mm -hmm. disengage it. So at least they stole a couple of shots, but guess what? Middle has already taken quite some damage as well. So if d Dunk channels it all the way through, they're definitely going to get another keep, which would be huge for them. But without level 20, there's only so much Supernova can do. They're trying to cycle around the bottom. Maybe they can find someone here. Like H82, actually, even the Garage is not safe from a 5 versus 4 onslaught. Yeah, just just don't get caught. Don't mm. get caught is the name of the game for either of these teams right now. But Supernova, they are two keeps down. They haven't even taken a single keep of Zedong. The third keep just took a little bit of damage as well. And there's double Siege Giants about to be piling their way into lane while Supernova find their level 20. The level 20, though, is all they need. There's so few structures, and with that Anubarak Beetles to tank them, all Supernova need is a team wipe to potentially rush core. And what are we going to see at level 20? I mean, both Rainer and Junkrat get a massive damage power spike at level 20, right? We see the cannonballs for Junkrat, greater wave clear, greater AoE damage all across the board. Rainer goes for the Duskwing. Okay, doesn't go for the armor reduction on Garrosh, which we sometimes see. But goes for a beefier Banshee. We want the new Barak. What are we going to see from the other two? The upgraded on Defender healing her allies. Yurel trying to keep himself alive, Ooh. and there is going to be the on... Wait, what? Wait, that's the fire on Dragon Queen. Ancient Flame. Ancient Flame coming in for Alex Raza. Extra damage in those team fights. Yeah. Cool. Let's do it. I can't wait to see this work. So basically, her attack speed is reduced by 25% right now, but every single auto attack applies Flame Buffet. So yeah. she doesn't have many attacks, but if those attacks go through, they hurt extra bad. And it's basically all com coming down to this one team fight, right? Supernova says, all right, if we don't win the next team fight decisively, we're probably going to lose the game because the next temple phase is going to demolish us. Look at where the temples are going to spawn as well, Tetra. One in the top, one in the bottom. That is maximum distance, which makes it so hard to defend for Supernova. Exactly, and right now, that's exactly what Dedong wants to take advantage of, moving immediately into this bot lane, siege it up, but Supernova, they're real happy to fight right now, this is probably their best chance to this do so. This is the so. flank. This is the flank, this might be what they have to do to make this kind of play. Look Here at they come. positioning, he's ready to try and make a turnaround play, because everyone's grouping up on this wraparound from the side. In comes Yurel, quick toss on her, trying to lock her down, Rip her, coming in, good damage, but Hammer, Hammer, Hammer! Damage onto Raider as they turn around, but Hammer's already down before the bunker can land. We've got Kimchi backing up Salvo, 
is getting a decent amount of damage, but Cleanse the Claim being used a bit aggressively is trying to take out Hero, but the shield is too high. Urel is irrelentless. Oh She's trying what? to make that happen. What? Whoa, Alex with the dive forward picks up the first one, looking for a second, but can't They're not done yet. But they find Kimchi into the wall, and Alex picks up a second kill with the help of Junkrat. Wow, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. But look at this. They're not done just yet. D-Dunk, they Double have channel. two members so left. Smart. And that's all they need to occupy the temples. Can they do it fast enough? The keep is about to fall here. It's that's going to be some insane core damage. And how far it's are Supernova? Crazy. They have all the heroes there deployed. I think they're going to make it. Double temple versus the full assault of the Supernova Oh, this is getting team. close. But catapults this is are getting beginning close. to accumulate 60 to 70, 50 to Hold 60. Hold me, Tetra. It's a slight Hold lead me. for Supernova. And Supernova oh. bring it home oh. with 11% left on the core. And Supernova wow. hold on to their HGC spot. That was as close as it could have gotten there. 11% was all it takes. If only the heroes of D-Dang had gone there faster, but they were already making that split second decision. They made the best out of this mess that happened a couple of moments earlier. And what a way to go down here, unfortunately, for them. I mean, D-Dang, they put up such a good fight there. They were so close at the end in that final <gasps> game. They were getting better every game, it seems. But Supernova, it only took one fight. We were calling it for so long down structures, down everything, yeah. down experience, but it only takes one good fight. And Ancient Flame, Alex Straza, <laughs> yeah. dying the slow with Flaming Flames with a kill, it was so good. It was so good. And then of course, also the decision-making to descend right at the end yeah. of the enemy team. Normally a position where you never want to be as a lonely Alex Straza, but if you already killed members before, if the enemy is already on retreat, uh, and you can certainly do it, and it bought them enough time. But also, you got to give kudos to D-Dung, realizing that the only way to hold it was to go to the temples, occupy them. And what I mentioned earlier was actually bad for Supernova, that the temples were so far away because it was so hard for them to defend. It yeah. turned out it was their rescue because it took them so long to occupy the temples, right? It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, oh. wow. Well played. Supernova, well deserved holding on to their position in HGC career. Mm -hmm. Kendrick, me and you are living the best life. We get this kind of game. <laughs> it's so <laughs> good. So impressed. D-Dung, I can't wait to see what happens to their players, mm -hmm. especially Hero. I yeah. love to play throughout the series. I really want to see what happens to them, whether it's uh, the, North, the uh, Korean Open Division again, whether some of their players get picked mm -hmm. up, if there's any roster changes in HGC Korea. We'll have to wait and see. And once again, we have to also highlight Haben Man. Every single game, oh. he showed us a new tank. He uh, showed us a new facet of his uh, hero arsenal. And no matter what you put him on, the Garrosh, the ETC, the Anubarak, he always made those plays happen. Remember that boss fight? It seemed almost impossible for them to take it, but that isolating Cocoon on Garrosh was trying to go for a sneaky flanking maneuver. If he hadn't done that, Garrosh would have been in the back line and it would have been a different fight, but it bought them so much time and brought them back into this game, actually. So kudos to both teams showing strong individual performance, but also good team fights. Unfortunately, there's only one team that can stay in the pro division. And in that case, it's going to be super no.